My name is Tom Harris. I'm Executive Director of International Climate Science Coalition Canada. I have a Bachelor and Master's degree in Mechanical Engineering with a specialization in Thermodynamics, Heat Transfer, and Fluid Mechanics. I work as an engineer for the National Research Council, other government departments, and in the high-tech sector. As a lecturer at Carleton University, I taught climate change to about 1,500 students. To start, I'd like to tell you about what happened in Texas when they relied on unreliable power, as Ottawa planned. As dawn broke on February 15, 2021, 80-year-old Julius Gonzalez made his way to one of his regular dialysis appointments. But he found the clinic had lost power and was closed. So he drove back to Arcola, Texas, where he lived with his wife, Mary. But the power was out there, too. As temperatures plunged to minus five, they couldn't get warm, no matter how much and how close they huddled to their generator powered electric heater. By 5 a.m. the next morning, Julius Gonzalez was dead. Mr. Gonzalez was one of about 700 people who died due to hypothermia, carbon monoxide poisoning, house fires, etc., caused by a power blackout that left over 8 million Texans without power, without heat and water for up to five days. With freezing temperatures, people resorted to using their gas ovens or burning furniture to stay warm. Others used barbecue grills or their cars to create heat. This created a carbon monoxide poisoning disaster. The blackout happened largely because the state did not have sufficient reliable power. As the state with the most wind power, Texas had become overly dependent on wind power, an unreliable source. You see, on February 8th, wind was providing over half of the state's electricity. But between February 8th and 16th, wind crashed to practically, well, just a few percent. The use of natural gas increased by more than fourfold, but it wasn't enough to make up the shortfall. If Ottawa goes ahead with its $57 billion plans to get rid of fossil fuels and power the city largely on wind and solar power, there's a huge risk that a greater disaster will hit Ottawa even than hit Texas. In our January 2022 report, ICSC Canada described why the city's climate change master plan is infeasible and damaging to Ottawa's, the environment, and human rights. In July, we sent an open letter to Mayor Watson and the Council, alerting them to our report, explaining that Ottawa is on the verge of a self-induced crisis being brought on by prioritizing, quote, stopping climate change, unquote, over real-world concerns. No one replied to either our letter or our report. Consequently, we ask that each member of this committee read our report at icsc-canada.com and respond in writing before voting on the budget. We also recommend to count that you, we also ask that you recommend to council that all funding for the city's climate change master plan, electric buses, and the resiliency and climate change program be removed from the budget until unbiased open consultations are carried out by this committee. Those consultations should involve experts from all sides of the issue, so that councillors and the public can hear the actual state of climate science and the financial, safety, health and security implications of Ottawa's net zero plans. To help the committee understand why we need fossil fuels to protect Ottawans and the environment, I will leave you with this report from the non-governmental international panel on climate change, as well as some summary documents if you don't want to read a thousand pages. To help you appreciate how the rise in carbon dioxide is actually good for the environment and good for humanity, I'll leave you this report with thousands of peer-reviewed studies that show the benefits of CO2 and how we actually have nothing to fear about increasing carbon dioxide. And indeed, I'll also give you this so you can read a summary as well. And finally, to give you an overview of the science that contradicts that which you're relying on, I'll leave you with this report, which actually talks about the science of climate change 
that is not actually covered by the media. And I'll also leave some summaries of that. We'd be pleased to meet with any of you personally and to present our findings to a committee uh, or to the full council. We're convinced that following Ottawa's plans will leave us bankrupt, hungry, and freezing in the dark for no environmental benefit. I look forward to your comments and questions. Okay, thank you very much.